Good morning, friends. So today I wanted to come with you um, just a short little show just to brighten your day. I know a lot of you are probably overwhelmed today. Um, so I want to show you some of our tips that we use in my house. Years ago, we did use gift wrap um, and gift wrap went out. My son found out about he was he was maybe seven, eight, and he researched um, wrapping paper, or he read an article about wrapping paper, and how many tons of it end up in the garbage dump the week after Christmas. And he was appalled by this. He did a whole display at the Nature Center, and so he, we strove to come up with ideas on what to do instead. Um, the thing that we did for many years, and most of my nieces and nephews will remember this, was funny pages. So we used the comics from the Sunday paper. And I would save them all year long and then use them. And if I needed a stopgap measure, we bought these little gift bags, right? And they are technically reusable, but one year we stored them in the attic. And when we went to get them, they were full of bugs that were very happy to live in there and were breeding in there. Oh, it was gross. Um, so I'm always a little bit suspicious when people give me these. Uh, so they're not as reusable. Most people do tend to, to still throw them away. Um, and they can get nasty when you try and keep them. So I really don't recommend those. They're good in a pinch. But we turned to, um, originally I made all these and it became a little cumbersome after a while. Pillowcases. So you can buy pillowcases cheap anywhere. You can buy fun character ones for little kids. Adults, you can go with, you can even color code them. Like each person in the family gets a certain color. Um, if you're hinting, you can get the no drama llama, you can get mermaid ones, you can get character ones. Um, so pillowcases work great and some of my relatives look forward every year to getting a brand new pillowcase for Christmas. So that can be kind of fun. Um, the younger guys, sometimes they don't sell kids pillowcases separate. So what we started doing was the character towels. Um, this is actually a hooded Lego Batman towel. Not say, saying who that goes to. <laughs> I think we all know um and so yeah towels and sometimes you can buy if you look in this clearance section you can find different kids character towels throughout the year and you can set those aside and you can wash them at the last minute so there's no worry about any storage yuckiness or anything there last year we found um this bad boy again my gifts are already wrapped so this one's kind of heavy you can see um it's got that cute buffalo check. It's got the deer head that's popular this year. And it's got a good drawstring on it. Some of the ones that you get, if you get your gifts pre-wrapped from some of the delivery services, online delivery services, they have them. The drawstrings are some kind of ribbon thing. And if you pull the wrong way, the ribbons all pull out. So we got these I like a, um, a, a bargain household store, we'll call it. Oh, whatever. I say the names. I have no paid promotions here. We actually got this at Home Goods. I was really pleased with it. It's a really good drawstring. This, this sucker, I don't know whose this is. I'll have to find the tag or peek inside. Um, oh, this is actually my husband's. It's really heavy. I honestly don't know what's in it, but this bag stands up to it. And again, I can wash it right before I use it. So no worries about any bugs or any yuckiness in it. Another really great alternative, we found this at Sprouts Market. So some of your grocery stores have reusable bags. Sprouts has ones that are a little bit better. Um, I feel like, yeah, these are 95% recycled material. So they're super cute. They can be used as shopping bags then throughout the year. And they're recycled plastic, so they're also not going to be attracting bugs. And you can totally wipe them down and wash them. I know my friends are watching this and going, ooh, I hope that's mine. Um, yes, you know if, who this belongs to if you're one of my good friends. Um, also, cute things to do is if you wrap them in a towel or something, and it's a little bit boring, but you know it matches their towels, you can get packs of pillows sometimes at, um, ooh, what's that called? Kohl's sells like peace, love, joy before I had thankful, grateful, blessed. So they sell these packs and you can always use this as like a ribbon instead of a ribbon. Um, you can totally buy pre-made ribbons and attach them to the top. But this is also a cute idea because instead of a ribbon, still decorative, um, you can, they're 50% off right now at Kohl's. Um, and you can grab these and tie these on top instead of the big fancy bow. So you can still use your ribbon to attach this, but not go extravagant with the bow. Go extravagant with something that they can use again. Some of my friends were um, 
kneading up these little scrubby Christmas trees that you can use in the kitchen and some were doing washcloths and using those for the bows in their packages. I thought that was a super cute idea because I do like things to be reusable. Um, you know, sometimes you get the, the, when you come home from Christmas, the day after, there's just this pile of stuff and I don't want piles of stuff. Um, yeah, it may be cute on Christmas, super cute, but I really do want stuff I can reuse. Um, and speaking of being overwhelmed a couple days after Christmas, on a second, I wanted to show you just a couple things. So somebody was mentioning to me the other day about the compendium of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And I don't know that I, I brought this book up before. It is by the USCCB. Um, it's exactly what it says it is. It's back to the question and answer format, kind of like the Baltimore Catechism. Um, like, in what ways is the church a mystery? The church is a mystery in as much as, as in her visible reality, there's present and active a divine spiritual reality which can only be seen with the eyes of faith. So it does have the old-fashioned question and answer format. But what I wanted to tell you about, if you wanted to jazz up your prayer routine or you're stressed out um, and you're not speaking English anymore, <laughs> you can go back here. In the back, Appendix A is Common Prayers. And I think you can see there's two columns. So column A is English and B is Latin. So it's got the sign of the cross, the glory be, Hail Mary, angel of God, um, eternal rest. Like it has page after page of these. So you could spend a little time and just learn a tiny bit of um, Latin. So you can prick, pick one Latin prayer and say you're learning the glory be to the Father, you can just go, Gloria Patri, Gloria Patri, Gloria Patri, as you wrap one gift and get the next gift, and that's et filio, et filio, et filio. Um, you can make it fun. You could put each line on an index card. Um, you could write it out in Latin or phonetically, depending on, on the age of your kid or the reading ability of your family, and you could even have them go around the table and say it together or you know as as you wrap gifts maybe be like stop prayer time you know and you could have the cards numbered so everybody could read their card and you could say that short prayer to remember why we're there um i just thought that was a really beautiful idea again it's in the back of the compendium of the catechism of the catholic church this may or may not be available in a kindle format so that could be an easy way for you to get it super quick so i would look for that i know the main catechism is available as an app for your phone. So perhaps this is too. Um, if not, I mean, you can look your Latin prayers up online, but I just thought you might have this laying around and not have noticed that in the back of the book. And this week we were talking about, um, you know, we did the Pinterest boards and all, and how are we going to, what are going to be our spiritual resolutions for next year? And so I got out, this one is the Introduction to Catholicism for adults. And the reason I got this out was to look up spiritual direction. That's what I wanted to talk to you about this week. And why spiritual direction is important is it helps in the formation of our conscience. And I'll read you this little passage. It's from page 582. Conscience is a gift from God that enables us to demonstrate our love or antipathy for him by choosing to do good or evil. When exercising our consciences, we use human reason informed by the teaching of the church to make concrete moral judgments about whether a particular action is good or evil. The key to the correct formation of the conscience is knowing the truth. So if you don't know the truth, it's hard to form your conscience. And yes, there's some natural laws, some things that people know instinctively, like murder or bad. But the nuances of that don't appear to be there anymore. People are like, well, there's mercy killings and kids might have to live in poverty, so it's okay to kill them in the womb. No, never good to kill somebody. Um, so that is <clears throat> that is formation of conscience. When is it okay? And it, it does say, go on, unfortunately many people overlook the importance of forming their consciences. They do not hesitate to declare rightly that their consciences must be respected, but they then fail to appreciate this autonomy of consciousness is a function of their dignity as human beings which is intimately linked to the moral order established by God's. In other words, just as conscience must be respected, so too must be it be formed by God's law. And 
and you're thinking, well, that's great. Well, I went to CCD or, you know, Sunday school as a kid. So what's the problem? And as adults, we tend to stop our formation or maybe we attend a Bible study and learn some about a particular book at a particular time. But I want to propose to you something that's been proposed to me and I'm looking into um, spiritual director. And the back of the book, in the glossary, like I couldn't find spiritual direction in the index, but I can find it in the glossary. A person of known holiness who counsels another in his or her Christian life. It comes from Latin, dig rare, to put straight distinctly. Now, again, that's going to be a little tricky because you want to make sure that your spiritual director, when it says it's a person with great holiness, um, do they really have that? Are they really following the teachings of the church or are they following some small little offshoot of the church? So you've got to be careful, just like picking out a psychologist or psychiatrist, that that person is going to lead you correctly. Um, so you find a person usually that you really admire and feel like would be a good candidate to that. Somebody that you're already using as a role model is who you would ask. There are also some that will do it over um, the internet. You can do a Skype call, some will do a phone call. So you would first go ask um, a respected priest, or if they have, you can ask them if they have suggestions, if there's a monastery near you or a retreat center. A lot of times retreat centers will have them. So I'm in the hunt right now. I have somebody in mind. The person I'm using, because they can also be lay people, is actually she is, and I might get it wrong, I think that she is a psychologist. Um, and a counselor, as well as being a spiritual director and a life coach. So I'm considering asking her. And again, we have to make sure that we're a good fit because her teaching style may not be my learning style. And they don't necessarily teach you. They mainly listen and hear and try and direct you into developing the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I think we've talked about before Gifts of the Holy Spirit have to be used, and they're not for your benefit, they're for others' benefits. So that's something that sometimes you need someone else to guide you in, because you're not really, you might not see it as a gift. You may not see it as a gift for others. Um, like a lot of my artwork, you have not seen, and I know it's not for me, and the more I show it and share it with people, the more I'm blessed with new ideas, and so I really need to share that more and I know that, but it is difficult. And that's a way a spiritual director could guide me perhaps in how to do that appropriately or encourage me or point me maybe to saints that have had a similar problem. And so I encourage you to get out there and look for spiritual direction. That's what I'm going to do this holiday season. I may put up some more fun little videos, hopefully some short ones for you. And then I will see you in the new year and we'll get back to the hardcore work. So God bless you, friends. Please pray for me, um, especially if you're going to Mass, praying for each other at Christmas Mass. Pray for all our fellow viewers, all our friends here at Our Blooming Catholic Life. Uh, don't forget, if you like this video, to like, share, and subscribe. There's going to be plenty more in the new year. And check out any new videos that may show up for you to watch. God bless, friends.